So this looks exactly like the shart, shart, oh my God, <laughs> shart. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a full face of first impressions using both drugstore and high-end makeup. I'm really, really excited about all of the products that I have to show you guys today, so I'm not gonna waste too much time with this intro. But I did wanna say, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. And if you are already subscribed, please make sure you hit that little notification bell. That will notify you every time I upload a new video. And stay tuned to my channel because I have some really exciting content coming up as well as another giveaway. I've been collecting products for this giveaway and I really think it's gonna be a great one, so stay tuned for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video if you want to see this full face of first impressions using drugstore and high-end makeup, keep watching. So to get started with this full face of first impressions, I'm gonna go in with a couple new primers that I got from the drugstore. These are both by NYX. This one is the Hydra Touch Primer and this one is the Pore Filler Primer. So I'm gonna go in with the Pore Filler one first and just put this in the areas of my face where I need to blur my pores and where my makeup tends to break up a little bit more. So this is an interesting consistency. It really reminds me a lot of the Benefit Porefessional. I think this could be potentially a great drugstore dupe. And I'm always looking for great drugstore dupes. I actually really want to do a full face of high-end versus drugstore dupes in the future. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see something like that. And I'm noticing that my redness is not too bad right now. I've actually started a new skincare routine and I'm going to try it for another couple of weeks or so. And if I find that it's really working to reduce my redness and my texture, then I will film it for you guys, but it's still being tested. So now going in with the NYX Hydra Touch Primer, I'm feeling like it's a very slippery consistency. It does feel hydrating, but I'm hoping that it ends up sticking the makeup to my face okay because it feels kind of slippery. All right, so now moving on to foundation and for the first time in a first impressions video, I'm actually not all that excited to use this product. I picked up the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. This is the hydrating version. And I just wanna tell a little bit of a story about acquiring this foundation. So I actually wasn't aware that this was coming out um, until I was on Twitter and I saw that someone had tweeted at Tati um, the new Shape Tape Foundation is getting released, you know, X day. And she replied back, oh, I can't wait. And that was why I saw it in my feed. Um, so I had no idea that this was coming out. I don't watch new releases in the makeup community too closely and I don't have tons of time to spend on social media. So I keep up the best I can, but this was just something that I had missed. Um, turns out that it was releasing the very next day. So I thought, you know, great, like Shape Tape Concealer is such a huge product. So I figured that Shape Tape Foundation would be great for me to try on my channel. So I set a reminder in my calendar for the next morning to pick it up. And when I went to go buy it, I was originally going to buy the matte foundation. And again, keep in mind, I hadn't seen really anything on social media about the Shape Tape Foundation up until this point. So I went online intending to buy the matte foundation because even though I have super duper dry skin, I don't really like wet, dewy looking foundations. I like to look matte. So what I have to do is try to find like hydrating matte foundation. So I was gonna get the matte foundation because I figured the hydrating one would be far too shiny on me. And I didn't know what shade to get. And I always have this problem when I'm trying to buy foundations online. I am not somebody who gets a ton of PR. I am not somebody who just has like shit tons of money just to waste on makeup. So I can't buy three foundations of the same type in three different shades and hope that one of them will match me because that's just a huge waste of money. I don't self tan. I don't have any need for darker or lighter foundations. This is my skin color basically the whole year around. So when I'm picking a shade online, I have to make very certain that it's going to work for me. So I actually tried Tarte's uh, shade finder when it came to the matte foundation. And I took the quiz, I answered all the questions, and at the end it said, get your result. And it said, sorry Tartlet, we don't have a shade for you in this particular foundation, try something else. So after that, I went back to the matte foundation page so that I could look at the shade range to see um, if I could find one that sort of looked like it might be close for me. And that was when I saw the horrific shade range for Shape Tape. And I'm not even talking about me because there was like 13 shades for fair skin people, and then about two shades for people of color three if you're being generous. At first I thought it was really odd that like I couldn't even find a shade for me in the matte foundation um, based on the responses that I was putting into the official Tarte quiz. But the fact that like if I had a darker skin tone, I'd have even a harder time. So I went over to the hydrating foundation and thought, okay, well I do have dry skin, so let's try a hydrating foundation. I took the quiz and out popped Fair Beige. So that's what I bought. 
Um, but then right after that, as I was waiting for the product to get to me, that's when I started seeing all of the photos of the horrific shade range of the Shape Tape Foundation. I started seeing all the videos of all the beauty YouTubers who are talking about this issue. And I just, I was so disappointed because just that little tiny bit of disappointment that I felt when I couldn't find the right shade for me in the matte foundation, that is what people of color go through all the time because they are so underrepresented in the beauty community. So now I'm just really disappointed. I'm disappointed at Tarte as a whole. I'm disappointed at the shitty shade range of this foundation. I'm disappointed for the people of color who are just so grossly underrepresented and Tarte needs to do better and the beauty community needs to do better and brands need to do better and it needs to be more inclusive. Makeup is for everybody. It's not just for people who are white. It's not just for people who are a size two. It's not just for people who are 25 years and under. Makeup is for everybody and so brands need to recognize that and release products that are for everybody. Now I am gonna try this foundation because when all was said and done, it cost me $66 Canadian to get this foundation to my house. So I am gonna try it because um, I wanna see if this shade is actually gonna match me and I wanna see if this foundation is even any good. But yeah, I'm not excited about it. I'm not happy about it and um, yeah, I just think it was just such a shitty moment. And I really hope that other brands looked at what happened with Tarte and saw the uproar and the uprising in the beauty community and people saying that they're not gonna stand for this crap anymore and that they realize that it's worth it to wait to release a product until they have all of the shades ready and that they can release it to everybody so that everybody can enjoy it. So putting all that aside, I am gonna give you my true first impressions on this product. Um, so this looks exactly like the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Um, it has like a doe foot applicator on the inside and so I guess you just sort of like sweep this onto your face. I have to say, just right off the bat, I'm kind of not excited about this as a uh, way to put the foundation on my face because it just seems like um, you would get a lot of like, I don't know, bacteria as you wipe it on your face and then you dunk it back into the foundation. I don't know. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go in with, see what kind of coverage we get. I guess you just sort of like mush it around like that. And I'm just gonna take my beauty sponge and tap it into the skin. You can see that it does have some decent coverage. I do have a lot of redness and so it has covered it up fairly well. There are a few spots on my face that I feel there is some redness poking through still, so I'm probably gonna have to go in with a little bit more. Um, but it's, the coverage is good on it. Um, just looking at how it's laying on my skin, I feel like it's emphasizing my fine lines a little bit right here. Um, and it is already creasing up underneath my eyes. It's also kind of moving around a little bit and maybe that's like the hydrating part of this that um, it's a little bit more of a slippery foundation. So I'm finding like as I'm blending it in, it's not really sticking to my skin very well. That could be the primer though underneath, so. All right, so I have the full face of foundation on and just taking a closer look, I'm definitely noticing that it is kind of a creasy foundation. So I only had it on for a little while, like maybe about 30 seconds to a minute and it already started to hugely crease underneath my eyes. So I kind of had to avoid that area. Um, it also has started to crease on my eyelids as well, even though I only tapped a little bit over my eyes. Um, I don't love the coverage on this foundation. I would definitely say that this hydrating foundation is more of a medium coverage. It's not a full coverage. I've actually gone in with um, three coats of foundation on each of my cheeks, just in this a tiny area, and there is still some redness poking through, and I can't afford to put any more foundation on there. I'm gonna look like a cake monster so so to set my face i'm going to use this mac patrick star powder i actually have used it before but um i haven't really used it on camera so it's a really finely milled and i really love the way it feels it's so soft and it gives like this sort of blurred beautiful finish over top of the foundation especially for a foundation like this one that is a lot more sort of dewy and wet looking i really like to look matte and i like my foundation to stay in place so i'm going to use a lot of setting powder especially in the areas where my makeup tends to break up i don't know if you can see that but the creasing in the eyelid that is just like insane yeah you can definitely still see the redness um, underneath this foundation and I used a lot of it so I'm looking pretty ghostly right now. I don't really have a new face powder to use so I'm gonna go in with some Giorgio Armani uh, Luminous Silk Powder and just set the rest of my face. I really need to make sure that this foundation is set. Um, 
because it does seem a little bit slippery, especially with that primer and the fact that it's a hydrating foundation. <sighs> Quick little wine break. This is my favorite rosé at the moment. It really, really is so crisp and refreshing. I can't exactly remember the name of it right now, but I will put it in the description box below. I got it at my local liquor store and it's from France, I believe. It's really good. All right, so I was just about to start talking to you guys about the bronzer that I'm gonna use and I took a look at my face and this foundation is already starting to really collect and settle into my fine lines. So especially right here, I have kind of a deeper, um, I guess, wrinkle that's starting to form. And I also have some fine lines right between my eyes and a little bit around my smile lines. And I'm already noticing that this foundation is caking up in there. Um, so that is not cute. And it also like keeps collecting underneath uh, my eyes in the fine lines underneath my eyes, even though I put a ton of setting powder in there. So, all right, so for bronzer, I'm actually gonna go into this Pure Bronze and Brighten palette. I got this in my BoxyCharm box for the month of January, and I actually really like the look of it. Normally, I don't love the palettes that come in the BoxyCharm boxes, especially if they're not well-known brands, because usually they tend to be, I don't know, just a, a little bit cheap or like not as good as the makeup that I already have in my collection, but I really like the look of this one. The bronzer is a little on the glittery side when I'm looking at it in the pan, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna love it, but this blush is a really pretty color, and then the highlight in the middle, that gorgeous champagne color, I think is really pretty, so I'm gonna try all three of these products on my face today. All right, so first going into the bronzer, I'm just gonna use a little tiny bit on my Tom Ford bronzer brush. I'm nervous about this because I don't want a super shiny glittery bronzer. All right, so it looks like a little goes a long way when it comes to this, so that's good. It's a good thing that we went in with a light hand at first. All right, and then I'm just gonna take a little bit on the cheekbone. Since this is not a very full coverage foundation, I wanna be careful about the amount of products that I apply to my cheeks because the redness is already showing through, so it's like I don't even really need blush because my cheeks are so red. So that bronzer was really good so far, so let's go ahead and go into the blush. Now this blush looks like a pretty bright color, so as I said, I'm just going to very lightly dust it on first, using a very light hand, so as not to go overboard with super red cheeks. And then of course, just going in with a clean brush to blend everything together and sort of brush away any extra pigment that might be laying on the face. All right, so far so good, that's two for three. So since we have it out, I'm gonna go right into the highlighter so I can give you my first impressions on the whole palette. So I'm actually just gonna swatch this highlighter first because I haven't actually touched it yet. Ooh, that is pigmented, wowza. This actually reminds me a lot of Prosecco Pop from the Becca Cosmetics line. That was the second shade that Jaclyn Hill came out with after Champagne Pop. And this is a really pretty nice gold highlighter. And uh, who knows, I might be giving away Prosecco Pop by Becca in a future giveaway, so stay tuned. So since that highlighter is looking pretty pigmented, I'm first gonna go in with my Morphe 501 brush. This is the brush I use for highlighting, and just see how that looks on the face. Ooh. All right, so now taking a look at all three products on the face. So I really like that highlighter. It's, it's not as blinding as what I would normally wear, but it does seem to be buildable. So I think I could put more on top of that and build it up to the luminosity that I prefer. Um, but it's sitting really nice on the skin. It's a good powder. It feels like a good quality powder. I feel like the blush is pigmented. It blended into the bronzer nicely. You can definitely see the products on my face. So pigmentation is not an issue. They all seem really blendable. So overall, I'm really impressed with this palette. So I think this would be excellent for traveling so that you have bronzer, blush, and highlighter all covered. Or if you're putting together a makeup bag for the evening and you don't wanna take you know, 20 different products with you, this would be an excellent compact just to take in a larger purse maybe so that you can do touch-ups throughout the night. So again, this is the Pure Cosmetics Bronze and Brighten palette. This particular palette is called Dreamer and the three shades are called Blushing Glow, Afterglow, and Mineral Glow. So now for brows, I have a new brow product to try today. This is the It Cosmetics Brow Power Brow Pencil. This is in the shade Universal Taupe. So this is your standard brow pencil. It has a spoolie on one side and then it has the brow product on the other side. The only thing that has me kind of confused about this brow pencil is the shape of the actual pencil itself. So it doesn't have like a sharp tip. It's sort of like oval shaped. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like oval shaped and flat um, and kind of 
long on the side so I'm not really sure how the shape of this will really work out but we are going to try today okay so just on first impression I am getting a lot of pigment out of the pencil the pencil itself doesn't seem too dry um, and it seems to be a good color so there is good pigment on this pencil I'm able to actually carve out my brow pretty good using the side of this pencil but like already right away since the pencil is a little bit more on the soft side it's getting a little bit dull and then it's hard to get like the super precise lines that I'm used to with my Anastasia Brow Wiz. All right and now using the spoolie. The spoolie seems to be good it's not too stiff so it doesn't like brush away the product immediately. Okay well it's a decent brow product it's nothing to write home about and I really do not like the shape of this pencil. All right so I'm just going to prime my eyes for shadow using this Milani eyeshadow primer and then I'm going to zoom you in for the eyeshadow look. All right, so for first impressions for an eyeshadow today, I want to use this Becca Apre Ski palette, but looking at the shadows inside the palette, there actually aren't any matte shades. They're all shimmers. So I'm gonna have to pull a matte shade from another palette. Um, so I'm going to pull the matte shades from this Maybelline Total Temptation palette that I got at the drugstore. There are some warm matte shades on this side of the palette, so I'm just gonna go in with a combination of these two as my base color, and that will also allow me to sort of test the pigmentation of these shadows and see if they're any good. So just going in with those two warm browns. Okay, so these seem to be blending out pretty well. I am seeing a hair of patchiness, but that just could be my incredibly dry skin. Pretty pigmented, pretty buildable as well. I'm actually really surprised because I usually think that drugstore eyeshadows are not the best, but it looks like they're stepping up their game lately. So looking at the palette, I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. This is called Moonstone, and it's sort of a lighter yellowy tinged highlighter. And so that's what it looks like on my finger. And so what I'm gonna do is go in with my finger first and just see how these shadows apply finger only. And then if I need to, I'll go in with a shader brush and some Fix Plus. All right, so just to see the difference, on the other eye, I'm gonna go in with a shader brush into this product and I am going to spray some Fix Plus on it and just see what the difference is between that and just applying it with my finger. Oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you can definitely see a difference there. Applied with the finger, it's a little bit more blendable and a little bit more muted. And with Fix Plus, it's a lot more shimmery and noticeable. All right, so now going back into the Becca palette, I'm gonna go in with this color right here. It's a little bit of a darker brown. It's called Toasted Marshmallow. And I'm going to put that just on the outer corner and see if we can't deepen up this look a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. That one's kind of a disappointment because we're really not getting any pigment. All right, so I'm gonna try this one. This one's called Hot Cocoa. It's a little bit of a warmer brown. Looks a little bit more pigmented. Okay, that's a little bit better. Yeah, all right, so I think these two darker shades here were a little bit of a miss for me. I wasn't getting much pigmentation off of them. So because of that, I'm actually starting to think that this palette is maybe a little bit useless because the remaining shades in here are all Becca highlighter shades that you can actually buy. And I use my Becca highlighters as shadows all the time. So because I have most of the shades in this palette already as highlighters, I'm not sure that I would really need this palette in my collection, especially because the darker shades are not super pigmented or not as pigmented as what I would like. It is a really beautiful palette. Like I really love the packaging and it's nice to have in my collection, but I don't know that I'm gonna be reaching for this very often. All right, so now going back into this Total Temptation palette, I'm gonna go in with this um, sort of carbon shade right there and just put that very, very close to my lower lash line. Oh my God, look at that fallout. Holy crap. And then going back into that dark brown color that we used before, I'm gonna use that to blend out and smoke out the lower lash line. And you guys, I'm telling you right now, I hate this foundation. Like it is settling into my fine, like can you see that? It is settling so hard into the fine lines underneath my eyes. Uh, then just gonna put a little bit of that reddish color right underneath just so we got like a little bit of a match from the top. 
All right, so I know I'm being really, really extra, but I kind of wanted to try out a whole bunch of palettes at once. And I'm not really liking the shimmeriness of this shadow on my lids. I really wanted to go for a super shimmery lid. And while that Moonstone color is very, very beautiful, I find that as I'm blending the shadow, it's blending away most of the shimmer that I'm really looking for. So I'm gonna go into this ColourPop Golden State of Mind palette. And I'm gonna go in with this shade right here in the corner. This is like that beautiful champagne shade. So that color is called Golden Egg and it is a really, really shimmery as well. Like that looks really pretty. I'm gonna go in with a shader brush and some Fix Plus just to minimize any fallout because this product actually does seem really powdery. All right, please be good. Ooh wee. All right, now that's more like it. I am actually really impressed with how this ColourPop palette performed. If every shade in the palette goes onto the eyes as beautifully as that one, this is going to be a very, very excellent lid color palette. Like you could literally have the shiniest lid in any color you want. This is a really pretty palette, I love it. I'm just gonna go in with that Moonstone color again and see what it looks like in the inner corner. Okay, so it looks pretty decent. So I'm gonna see how it holds up in the inner corner while I finish the rest of my face. All right, you guys, I didn't have a new liner to try, so I just quickly threw on some of my e.l.f. Intense Ink Liner Pen. And now I'm going in with this new mascara I got, and this is the first time I'm going to be trying a mascara like this. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Superstar Mascara. This is in the shade Red Carpet Black. And what's interesting to me about this mascara is it is double-ended, so it has a lash primer on one side. So this is gonna be my first time kind of using a lash primer first. So let's see if it makes any kind of significant difference to the lashes. All right, so that's the primed lashes and they look to be fairly long. I'm getting good separation on my lashes, um, but I feel like I can still see a little bit of that white primer hanging around. And I don't wanna go in with too much mascara to cover it up because then I'm gonna be clump city. All right, so that's the difference in my lashes. I feel like that's decent. It's definitely no lash paradise though, so I'm not gonna get too excited. And I'm also gonna cover it up with falsies anyways. I do like the brush though, the wand is really good. There's definitely good separation. Like if I see a little bit of a clump, I can just sort of run the brush through the lashes and it separates them immediately, so I like that. All right, so I am going to go finish my mascara and put some lashes on off of camera and I will be right back. All right, so my lashes are on. I just put on a pair of Ardell Demi Wispies and this is the finished eye look. I really, really love this lid color, you guys. That ColourPop palette is such a winner for me so far just from like the few shades that I have swatched. And I don't know if the camera is really doing it justice, but there is a lot of different multicolored reflex in this shadow. It is really pretty and from what I can recall that palette was pretty affordable especially because you get 18 shades in it so that is definitely a win for me. All right so now I'm going to zoom you guys out and we're going to finish off the rest of the face. So as I said before the highlighter that was in that pure palette um, I think it's really pretty and I think it's sitting nicely on my skin but as you guys know I do like a more reflective highlighter. So I showed you guys this in my last haul video. This is the Physicians Formula Butter Highlighter. This is in the shade Pearl, so it's a really nice like white shade. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit of this on top of that other highlighter just to give me a little bit more of a reflective glow. And I'm going to use the Beauty Blender technique, which I really love. It really allows you to press the highlighter into your skin so it doesn't sit on top of your skin and emphasize your texture. And still, I'm going to reiterate that this foundation actually looks like complete crap on my skin. It's really settling into my fine lines. And given the fact that it's a hydrating foundation, I'm really surprised at how much it's sticking and clinging to the dry patches on my face. So that tells me that I probably would have disliked the matte foundation even more than I disliked this one. So it's a good thing I didn't buy it. All right, so I don't have any new lip products to try today. So I'm just gonna throw on a classic red lip to go with this eye look and I will be right back. All right, so we're back and I'm sorry for the lighting change in here. I just had to shut the blinds because that sunspot was getting huge behind me. Um, I just threw on a little bit of the Kylie Cosmetics Mary. I really emphasized using the actual lip liner this time and only put a little bit of the liquid lipstick over top because I find that the lip liner has a little bit more of a berry tone that I really, really like. So 
I really think it's a shame that she didn't make the shade permanent because it is my favorite one out of all of the Kylie Cosmetics liquid lipsticks. So when mine's done, that's gonna be a sad day. <laughs> all right, now to finish off this look, I'm going to use a new setting spray that I have, but it's not really new because I've used it 100 times before, but not this particular scent. This is the Coconut Fix Plus. And as I said in my previous videos, I really love using Fix Plus as a setting spray, not only because it has glycerin in it, which really sticks the makeup down to your face, but also that Fix Plus is 90% water. So it adds an extra burst of hydration to my face and I really need it right now because I am so dry Oh, that smells so good. It just reminds me of being on a beach in Mexico. I love love the scent of coconut and that is it you guys for this full face of first impressions i really hope you enjoyed this video let me know if there's any products that you've tried that i use today that you either love or hate or if there's anything that i mentioned in this video that you want to see in a future video please make sure you leave me a comment down below make sure you stay tuned to my channel because i have a very exciting giveaway coming up i've been collecting some really great products for you guys and i'm so excited to get this giveaway going so stay tuned to my channel for that and as always guys if you liked this video please subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment down below letting me know the kind of videos you want to see me do in the future and if you didn't like this video keep that shit to yourself thank you guys so so much for watching and i will see you in my next video cheers